Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are honored to have some very special guests today from Boston. We have Dr. Charles Jacobs. You may know him as the founder uh, of a very famous organization fighting against anti-Semitism on the East Coast, Americans for Peace and Tolerance. Uh, welcome, Dr. Jacobs. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have you today. And I understand you have brought along a special guest. Yes, um, we're very lucky to have with us uh, a man who just wrote a book on the topic that we're about to discuss. His name is Ilya Feoktistov, and he is the executive director of my organization, Americans for Peace and Tolerance. And uh, as you'll see, he's, he's wonderful. Wonderful is great, and uh, welcome to both you gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report today. So you're on today to talk about this mosque in Boston that's a front for what many would call radical Islam. Has this mosque produced any what we would call jihadi types or radicals coming out of there? This mosque has produced some extremely famous jihadis. In fact, 14 individuals uh, associated with the mosque, either leaders, donors, or just members, uh, have been killed, are fugitives from the law, or are in prison because of their involvement in terrorism. Its founder is in jail for funding al-Qaeda and for an assassination plot against uh, the former Saudi crown prince. Um, one of its uh, top members in the 1990s became known as Lady Al-Qaeda shortly after 9-11. She was the most wanted woman in the world uh, because of her involvement uh, at the top levels of Al-Qaeda. Um, recently, more recently, the son of the mosque's vice president turned up in Syria as the head of the propaganda department for ISIS. He was the chief editor of its uh, online magazine, propaganda magazine, Dabiq, and he was ultimately killed in a Iraqi Ameri and American airstrike in 2007, uh, 17. And of course, there's the Marathon Bombers who attended the uh, old mosque in uh, Cambridge, the Islamic Society of Boston, smaller mosque in Cambridge, um, and who were involved with this mosque from their very uh, arrival in Boston in the United States. And they became, uh, as I talk about in my book, they became increasingly radicalized uh, as they became, began to be increasingly involved with this mosque. And uh, that, that, that's because all, all of this is happening because um, of the stuff that's being taught at this mosque. Uh, recently, the mosque's security guard, the Roxbury Mosque's security guard, decided uh, that he was going to go and behead Pamela Geller, but that was um, too much of a hassle, so he set out to behead police officers. Boston cops uh, was shot down in the street, but he was uh, a security guard at the mosque and the brother of one of the mosque's imams who preached there. So the list goes on, and um, unfortunately, I think it's going to become more than 14, and because it's been a steady rate since 9-11 of members of this mosque popping off and becoming terrorists. This sounds like Radical Central, and if I was mm -hmm. going to take the religion out of this story, Ilya, and let's say we called it the mafia, what the FBI would have done, if they found the hangout where the mob was making their business, so to speak, they would infiltrate that organization for the purposes of taking it to a federal prosecutor and, and bringing in indictments from grand juries, wouldn't they? I mean, this seems to be the hub of terrorism in Boston. Yeah, you know, the problem is the Obama administration forbade the FBI to go into mosques. Um, I, perhaps the Trump administration has changed that policy, but uh, it, it's a major problem because with, with the mafia, we weren't ever and still are not constricted by these kinds of rules. 
if they're organizing at communion or at a, you know, at a funeral with a Catholic priest, um, they're going to send informants there. there, there there's uh, the, the fact that they're, they're using a church or a mosque to uh, conceal criminal activities does not make those criminal activities protected from law enforcement. And yet, at and least yet, the last administration, it was off limits, you're saying. Right. Absolutely. I'll tell you a story that'll curl your hair. Ilya and I uh, were, um, were briefed the FBI. We, we sat there with them. Ilya has the PowerPoint presentation he made to the FBI. And we, t we showed them all the evidence that we had. And then when the head of the FBI went to Congress and was uh, being grilled by Louis, Representative Louis Gomer, and he said to him, uh, didn't you realize, this was in the aftermath of the marathon bombing, didn't you realize that the founder, the head of the mosque, uh, Alamudi, was in jail because he was an Al-Qaeda fundraiser? And the, and the FBI gets, head said, uh, Mueller said, no. Well, it wasn't true because we did tell them. We showed them. We proved it. So it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely frightening that the FBI, at a political level, was told to lay off this kind of danger and threat to the American people. It, it almost seems that we have invited the Trojan horse in, except it's not a surprise because we know what's inside. So we've opened the gate and said, come in, do what you will. And even when we're sure what you're doing, we're going to look the other way. Am I seeing this wrong? No, I mean, I think that's what happened in Europe. Um, and, and, and to incredibly uh, horrific uh, effect. And that's what's happening in America. And it's an ideological blinders. Uh, or an ideological uh, limitation that prevents uh, us from acting in a logical, rational way to defend our very way of life. So I think you don't have it wrong at all. So I end my book actually with uh, uh, the story of the Trojan horse, not from the Iliad, uh, but from uh, Quintus Smyrnius, uh, The Fall of Troy where he gets into Cassandra, this prophetess. She was, uh, it, as a reminder, Cassandra was the daughter of the king of Troy, and she was cursed with being able to see the future, but with no one believing her. And so as they bring that horse in, and she, she cries and she says, fools, ye know not your doom. Still ye rejoice with one consent and madness who to Troy have brought the horse where ruin lurks. And uh, the Trojans cried shame on her and said she spake but lies with a raving tongue of evil speech. And uh, they took her away from the horse and flung afar uh, her fire and steel and careless turned to the feast for darkened over them their last night. Um, it, it's very unpleasant to be in the role of Cassandra, and I think Charles has been in that role for decades, um, and seeing sort of your, your countrymen tear down your institutions all around you. Well, we haven't written the ending yet, Ilya. Um, is it getting better, or is it getting worse? I think under the Trump administration, it's getting better. Um, I mean, empirically, you could see that uh, the very last years of the Obama administration were characterized by extreme violence and terrorism in Europe, but also in the United States. We had the San Bernardino attacks. We had the Orlando attacks on the gay nightclub. Um, and we had a lot of uh, things happen up in Boston, including the cops beheading plot. Since Trump came in, we had one attack and it was very recent, um, the Saudi attack on a military base. Uh, that wasn't a homegrown attack, that was a Saudi national who was training here. But it seems like at least as far as getting to the homegrown terrorist, the Trump administration has really stepped up the game 
uh, and picked up the ball that the Obama administration dropped. Unfortunately, uh, the underlying sort of um, disease that causes the symptoms of homegrown terrorism has not been removed. The Islamic Society of Boston and other Muslim Brotherhood groups in the United States are still radicalizing uh, moderate Muslim uh, children and other members of the American Muslim community. And uh, so it's a mixed bag. Ilya, tell people where they can find your book. I think this is important. The book is available on Amazon, Terror in the Cradle of Liberty is its name. And you can also find it uh, through our website, peaceandtolerance.org, uh, which also includes many articles on this and many other topics of interest to the viewers. Thank you for that. And I encourage ATP viewers to go out and get it. Charles, how can people find out more about what you're doing? From our website, uh, Americans for Peace and Tolerance website, which is peaceandandtolerance.org, as Ilya said. I also have a site about um, the enslavement of blacks currently around uh, in, in, in Africa by mostly by Muslims and, and, and Arabs. It's called I Abolish, the letter I Abolish.org. Um, and they can, they can find out everything that I'm doing through those two sites, pretty much. Great. I encourage all of our viewers to check out Ilya's book and check out uh, the foundation in Boston. This is stuff we need to know about. I want to thank you both for the work you're doing. You're brave gentlemen in the face of tolerance that is truly pacifism. And um, generally what happens to people like that is they get run over and later generations lament, why didn't we do something when we knew what was going on? Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report. Uh, remember, you can always go to our, our text message service and get reports like this one for free on your phone. Simply text the message TRUTH to 88202 and you'll be subscribed to our text message service. You'll always get everything for free. We don't charge for content, and you'll get it every couple of days right on your cell phone. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.